Hi everyone, my name is Marissa and I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics with a minor in statistics. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss the reason why we use samples, as well as discuss the three most common forms of bias. Imagine that we attend a university with 30,000 other students. This semester, we are taking a biology class and our first assignment is to determine whether or not athletes at the university have a lower average heart rate than non-athletes. Although it would be ideal, using all 30,000 students for the assignment would be far too time consuming and unrealistic. In order to get an idea of the true heart rate of all athletes and non-athletes at the university, we decide to use a sample of 40 athletes and 40 non-athletes. All students at the university represent what is called the population. The population is every member that is part of the group that we are interested in studying. The 80 students chosen for the study are known as the sample. A sample represents a subset of the population. When we calculate values such as the mean and standard deviation using all members of the population, these numbers are known as parameters. For example, sigma, the population standard deviation, is a parameter. When these values are calculated using just a sample of the population, they are called statistics. For example, the sample standard deviation S is a statistic. There are two types of statistics that are the most commonly used, descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics are used to give us information about the data we collected from our sample. Some descriptive statistics include the median, mode, and range. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, are used to make assumptions about the entire population. Examples of inferential statistics include z-tests, t-tests, and linear regression. Although sampling can be useful when we are unable to study every member of the population, we need to ensure that we select a sample that is free of bias in order to get an accurate representation of the population. Bias occurs when methods used to collect a sample result in values that are too high or too low. There are three common types of bias that we need to watch out for. Selection bias, non-response bias, and response bias. Selection bias occurs when we choose a sample that does not represent our population. For example, if we wanted to determine the average mile time for American females and only sampled college track and field athletes, this would make it seem that the true average mile time for American females is much lower than it actually is. Non-response bias occurs when a study or survey is conducted in a way such that not everyone in the population is able to participate. For example, if we were to conduct a survey regarding a town's opinion on building a new park that you needed to complete using an iPhone, that would only allow those with an iPhone to participate. People such as the elderly do not typically own iPhones, and this would result in an entire portion of the town's population not being represented. Response bias occurs when a question is asked in a way that may cause the participant to not answer the question honestly. For example, let's say that a researcher wanted to know what proportion of teenagers smoke cigarettes, and the researcher decides to survey the teenager with their parent or guardian present. This will result in response bias because the teenager is unlikely to tell the truth about a topic such as smoking in front of their parents to avoid punishment. Many students tend to forget whether a statistic represents a sample or population. A trick to help remember this is remembering that both parameter and population start with the letter P and both sample and statistic start with S. Let's test our knowledge with a quick exercise. A shop owner wants to know if he should extend his store hours to 6 p.m. rather than 5 p.m. He randomly selects 40 customers who were in the store from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. What type of bias is this? This is an example of non-response bias. By only asking customers who are able to come into the store before closing hours, the owner is eliminating responses from those who are unable to come into the store during those hours. Those who cannot come to the store during the current hours are most likely those who will be in favor of extending store hours. Great job, everyone. Today we learned about why sampling is necessary as well as the three most common forms of bias. 
Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out other videos about statistics applications and lessons here on Chegg. Have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.